As soon as an elevator on the Bourge Dubai exceeds its speed limit, emergency brakes spring into action. Metal brake shoes bite down on the guide rails and generate enough braking power to stop the elevator within a few meters. But at the end of the day, the safety that we depend on, that the riders depend on to bring the car to a safe and a controlled stop is still a mechanical device. The safety elevator allowed the skyscraper to break through the five-story barrier. Suddenly, tall buildings were big business. But as they approached 80 meters, traditional building materials were no longer strong enough. To make the leap to the 87-meter Fuller Flatiron building in New York, the skyscraper had to be reinvented. This is the Monadnock building in Chicago, a living fossil in the skyscraper world. When it opened in 1893, it was the world's largest office block, but its 16 stories stretched stone to the limit. The walls at the bottom were a whopping two meters thick to bear the weight of the Monadnock. The structure was so extremely heavy that it soon began to sink into the soft Chicago soil. Eventually, half a meter of bricks and mortar disappeared underground. Obviously, stone was not skyscraper material. So when the architect of the Monadnock, Daniel Burnham, was planning the Fuller building in New York, he was in a bit of a pickle. The extremely narrow plot dictated that his 22-story skyscraper be triangular. Burnham knew that there was no room for stone walls. They would have to be so thick that there would have been hardly any space left on the ground floor. And wasting valuable space is a cardinal sin for a skyscraper architect. Stone was out of the question. But if you look at the Fuller flat iron today, it looks like it is built from stone. So how did Burnham do it? It's all just a facade. Under the skin of the Fuller lies one of the most important building technologies ever invented. Burnham made the building out of steel columns and beams, locked together into a steel skeleton. Steel is much stronger than stone, so this skeleton could be thin and light, yet it could support the weight of the whole structure. To keep the weather out, Burnham could simply hang thin masonry walls off the steel frame like curtains. Steel construction truly moved the skyscraper on. This was a new breed of building. Once the steel skeleton frame is perfected, basically you could build hypothetically to any height, and that meant that land values in commercial areas of New York absolutely skyrocketed, because no longer was land valued for a, an eight or 10 or 12 story building, which was the most you could build without the steel skeleton frame, but now the sky was literally the limit. The skeleton of the Bourge de Bay combines the best of steel and stone. It uses over 30,000 tons of steel, but in a very clever way. The steel is embedded in artificial stone, concrete. This reinforced concrete backbone 
will be clad in a high-tech curtain wall of glass and steel. The curtain wall of the Burj Dubai will cost a hundred million dollars. So before it's bolted on, the engineers take prototype sections for a test drive. This is where the rubber meets the road. Yeah. It has to yeah. perform. It has to perform right here. Today, the engineers apply the ultimate test. An aircraft engine simulates a desert storm. We try to put everything that Mother Nature would throw at the building into these tests. If the brackets can't resist the wind loads, you have the prospect of the, whole, the, the curtain wall peeling off the whole building. If you erected a curtain wall and you didn't find out how an inherent design flaw, like it leaked or something, until after it was occupied and the first storm came, it's unthinkable. The propeller spits wind and rain backwards at the curtain wall section mounted behind it. It reaches speeds of 75 kilometers an hour, a real challenge for the curtain wall. Will the prototype withstand the pressure? The buffeting and the movement of the water across the surface is finding weaknesses. And if there's any flaws in connections or holes in the curtain wall, the water will seep through. So if you see any water coming through, it's a fail and you know what's happened. But today, the prototype passes the test with flying colors. The Burj Dubai takes one step further to completion. Now the challenge for the engineers is to stop the baking desert sun from turning their beautiful glass tower into a giant oven. Steel catapulted skyscrapers to unseen heights. As walls now no longer had to bear all the weight, architects could make them out of completely new materials. Glass promised to flood the 154-meter UN building with light, but also with heat. To beat this new enemy, skyscrapers would have to get cooler. In 1947, when the United Nations designed their new headquarters in New York, they faced a dilemma. They wanted to cover the building with glass to make the interior as bright as possible. What they didn't want was a 39-story greenhouse. A glass wall would allow a lot of light into the building, but also solar radiation. This would be absorbed by the objects inside. These, in turn, would radiate heat into the surrounding air and warm it up. And as the sealed glass windows couldn't let the hot air escape, things would get uncomfortable very quickly. You would basically be in an oven in the summer, so you need to have artificial cooling in order to make these glass skyscrapers work. 